Ask Reddit. Psychologists, what is something you want to, but can't say to a patient? Your kid is shitty, because you are shitty. During couples sessions, she slash he is a toxic ass and you need to defer this relationship. I don't do couples anymore. I found it exceedingly difficult for me to not take a side. Edit. During the first session, the couples worked with me to establish a treatment plan, which included specific goals. These typically included things like balancing home responsibilities, improved communication skills, seeking sexual compatibility, etc. I do not recall a time where they included in their treatment plan anything along the lines of figuring out if we should stay together. As such, it was outside my professional scope to advise them to separate. While I still practice, I'll never again work with couples. If you want different outcomes than the ones you're getting, you have to do different things. If you want things to change a little bit, you have to change the way you think and behave a little bit. If you want things to change a lot, you have to change the way you think and behave a lot. Therapy is for increasing functioning and decreasing distress. There may be circumstances in your life that you still dislike and want to work on, but those are not clinical concerns. If I begin treating the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune like a mental health disorder, you really will start to feel like you're fucked. I see how hard you're trying, even when it's just emotional effort with no changes in behavior. I want to see you do well. I will hope you're doing well long. After we lose touch, seeing you get better, even a little bit, is the best part of my job. You're doing all the right things, but your parents are vile and incompetent, and having you in therapy with me is not going to change that. If you want to have some of the things your peers have, partners, jobs, in-person friends, educational attainments, outdoor hobbies, etc., there is good chance your 8 to 12 hour daily marathon of gaming is holding you back. It's not the size of the change you make, it's the consistency. If you've identified something as good for you, keep doing it. If you've identified something as bad for you, stop doing it. If it's hard to start and stop things, take it slow, but don't do nothing. It doesn't hurt my feelings. If you tell me I got something wrong, don't understand, or aren't helping you the way you'd like. This might be the single most important thing you can tell me for us to develop a treatment plan that really works for you. I once had a guy come in because he was cheating on his wife, but didn't want to leave because of their kids. The guy was adamant that he wanted to have therapy either with his mistress or his wife and couldn't decide with which one he was going to stay. He decided to bring in the wife and I had to sit there listening to him deny the cheating and project his guilt into his wife telling her that she was the one cheating. Obviously I couldn't tell the wife the truth, but if I could I would have told her, he's cheating on you, you're not insane, get the fuck out. Edit, I told him several time, to not bring neither his wife or mistress, he did it anyway, and I had to do the session, because he had already paid, and the policy of the place I worked at was that if a patient had paid we couldn't refuse treatment. After that session I referred him to one of my partners, he was able to work through some of the issues as a couple, and individually with the guy, he did choose the wife in the end. I think I'm talking to the wrong half of your relationship. You're a grown man. Stop making your problems your mother's problems. She's got good intentions, but she's enabling all your worst behaviors and addictions, and you know that you're taking advantage of that. To the mom, there's no medal for loving your son the most you are an enabler. You acknowledge this, which is a good first step, but if it does not change your behavior towards him, it's meaningless. Stop making excuses for him. Stop letting him take advantage of you. Because if you don't, the rest of your family has stated that they are going to limit contact with you. You're risking relationships with every other person in your life for an exploitative codependent one with your son. The most common. Today I'm in no mood of your evasions and resistances to what we are trying to work with so stop talking about your damn cats. I care for you, but we are not friends. I'm trying to be as objective as I can so back off. I don't see the similarities between you and the fictional character you admire. I'm sorry. No one is forced to love you for what you are. We are just exhorted to respect you and recognize your dignity as a human being. So stop bugging that woman for not loving you for your fatness, your intellect and your medieval hygiene habits. So settle for the type of woman 
that likes your type, or change and be the type of man that attracts the type of woman that you have idealized. The insecurities of this man were so huge it was dangerous to say even the first part of this sentence without risking myself of having his mental breakdown in front of me. I'm a clinical psychologist, but since 2014 gave up on giving therapy and entered to the human resources stuff. Anything that makes a person feel weaker than they are is something you should never say to a patient, no matter how bad you might want to. As people, we are our own biggest obstacles. As a healer, the goal is to help and do good, never to do harm in any way such like this. It goes against my code. Shut up. I'm a psychologist. I do have some thoughts in mind. I don't want to say them back quote cause at the end, these are just spontaneous thoughts that rapidly come and go, but they do have the possibility of strongly impacting someone's life. Not a licensed psychologist, but I've got a BSc and Master of Science in Psych, and have done lots of work in psych hospitals, and as a coach to adolescents. 1. You don't have an anxiety disorder, you're just anxious, it's normal. It's okay to be anxious. By claiming it's a disorder you're seeking to wash your hands of responsibility. 2. You don't have depression, you're just desperate, it's normal. It's okay to be depressed. By claiming it's a disorder you're seeking to wash your hands of responsibility. 3. You're not autistic, you're just socially awkward. 4. By embracing labels you're not empowering yourself, you're giving yourself an out when the going gets tough. Him to insert disorder, to be held to these expectations isn't helping you. 5. Stay off Tumblr, it's a bucket of crabs. 6. Use the minimum needed dose of meds. Meds should be used as a helping hand to get you to a place where you can practice techniques and CBT to live with a minimum dose. You'll baseline if you just stay on your meds forever and they won't work as effectively. I've had a couple of thoughts I've hid in my treasure trove of thou shall not say to patients if you don't want to get sued type of list. Good god girl get a grip. So how does YOLO feel now that you're talking to a therapist? Tramp stamp or not, it's still a fucking tattoo. I judge by the hour, not by the day. We don't accept gruppen. Stop flirting. I'm not that escort you hired in Chelsea. To a lot of parents of my patients, you are the problem not your kids stop trying to live their lives for them. And to the religious one, every teenager wonders about sex you backwards dumb fuck. No one has corrupted them. Sometimes, when I see children raised by parents that are so fucking ignorant, that they think that they know what is best for their children, but don't know that they weren't raised well and didn't realize it, so they don't know better, I feel bad for them. Such a waste of clean minds. And if those children are not smart enough they will do the same thing to their children. Creating an infinite loop. I once saw this client, who was a vain, young guy, full of anger and hate who wanted to crush the people who wronged him. He had a curious backstory of being tragically physically underdeveloped and bullied until he underwent some special medical procedures in high school and grew into a taller, physically fit and handsome guy. I told him, you ever read comic books? Because you remind me a lot of a super villain. Of course, I went on to explain what I meant by that and to ensure he was benefiting from looking at his behavior and emotion regulation from a new perspective. I was rather proud of that one, and my supervisor at the time, acknowledged that he didn't think he could say something like that. What I didn't tell him, but could have, was that I really didn't care how much pussy he crushed that morning before coming to see me, and that we would both probably be better off if he kept that shit to himself. As far as psychotherapy goes, I'm more on the blunt side of things. There's really not much I wouldn't tell the person. You just have to find the right way to make it helpful to their treatment goals and delivered in a way they can digest and understand, hence the therapeutic part. You need to break up with him for the sake of your sanity. I have a very strong ethic in regards to telling the patient what to do. I'll do it when their life is at stake, but they have the right to make horrible decisions and I'm not taking advantage of their vulnerable states to stop them been in the mental health industry for over 5 years now, not a licensed psychologist but a counselor. Wow, you're a sociopath. You know you're a sociopath, right? Me, wishing I could say this too, at this point maybe 5 or 6 clients I've had, 
Edit. These were adolescents with sex offender backgrounds in a secured residential inpatient facility. They had no real choice but to be in treatment. No, it wasn't your reiki sessions that helped you dear. It was coming here once a week for months, but yeah. Let me just smile and say how good is that reiki for you.